As we continue to explore the topics in uh, quantum body, the new science of living a longer, healthier, and more vital life, my book uh, with Jack Tuzinski, quantum physicist and biologist, and Brian Fertig, a fellow endocrinologist, whom I'm also going to be speaking about today on these topics, metabolism and medicine, the metabolic landscape of health and disease. This is volume two, and uh, this is volume one. So Brian has lit, written a lot about metabolism and quantum metabolism, but uh, and I'll be speaking to him today and sharing the interview with you. But let's ask the question um, about classical biology and quantum biology. Is one emergent from the other? Is classical biology emergent from quantum biology? Or is it a result of um, quantum turning classical? So classical biology is the study of living organisms and their interactions with the environment. It is based on the principles of Newtonian physics and chemistry, which describe the behavior of matter at large scales. Classical biology has been incredibly successful in explaining and predicting a wide range of biological phenomena, from the structure and function of cells to the evolution of life on Earth. At least that model has worked. Quantum biology, on the other hand, is the study of how quantum mechanics, the physics of the very small, influences biological processes. Quantum mechanics is a strange and counterintuitive theory um, that describes the behavior of matter at the atomic and subatomic levels. It is characterized by phenomena such as superposition, entanglement, and tunneling, which are not possible in the classical world. There is growing evidence, however, that quantum mechanics plays a role in a number of important biological processes, including photosynthesis, vision, enzyme catalysis. Uh, for example, it is thought that quantum tunneling allows electrons to move through barriers that would be impossible for them to pass through according to classical physics. This process is essential for photosynthesis which captures energy from sunlight and converts it into chemical energy that can be used by cells. So quantum mechanics um, uh, looks at phenomena like superposition, entanglement, tunneling. And uh, our classical biology looks at uh, cells, organisms, and ecosystems on a macro level. Okay, so when I did a search, scientific search on Google and on various AI platforms, and I asked, you know, how many, uh, how many uh, biological processes occur in a single human cell in one second, the answer is 10 to the power of six astronomical processes occurring in one second. Then I asked various AI systems, can these occur 10 to the power of six reactions, um, uh, activities in a single cell without uh, quantum entanglement or quantum coherence? And the answer was, yes, they can. Quantum mechanics is not needed to invoke that. Then I asked also, um, whether homeostasis, which is dynamic non-change in the midst of change, needs quantum mechanics to be explained. And the answer was no. Feedback loops and on and on. No need to invoke quantum mechanics. Then I asked if uh, the various metabolic cycles, you know, like glycolysis, glycogenolysis, uh, the Krebs cycle and glycogen, you know, glycogen breakdown, glycogen formation. Can all these metabolic processes be in coherence with each other and coordinate with each other without 
uh, invoking quantum mechanics? And the answer was, yeah, we don't need to invoke quantum mechanics to explain the, the coherence of various metabolic cycles. Then I went on and asked, is uh, our mental processes uh, involved in regulating metabolism? And is that at a level of uh, the quantum biology? And the answer was no, again, we don't need that. Then I asked uh, several of the questions about the relationship of mind body. Uh, perceptual processing and uh, uh, and motor activity, coordinated motor activity. Do these processes require um, a deeper understanding at the level of quantum mechanics? Um, the answer was no. So, my friends, I think mainstream science is behind. You know, mainstream science is behind the principles that we outline in quantum body. I will have a deeper conversation today with Brian Fertig and um, share with you afterwards why mainstream science is still behind. Mainstream biology is still behind and needs to catch up. But, you know, that's coming from me who has um, training in medicine and biology. I have no training in quantum mechanics or mathematics, but I dare to say that my colleagues who are experts in the area do have a deeper mathematical understanding of quantum biology, which I'll share with you. But in the meanwhile, I'd like your feedback, even as lay people. Um, how do we explain the, the infinite, almost infinite, multiple things happening in a body all at the same time, at the cellular level, but also at the macroscopic level. How does a human body think thoughts, play a piano, kill germs, remove toxins, eat, breathe, think, feel, and metabolize and make a baby at, all at the same time while tracking the movement of stars and planets as its own biological rhythms. So I'd like your feedback on this. and. Uh, see where we go. I think this conversation has to occur outside of mainstream science. Hopefully it'll catch on. And this conversation outside of mainstream science will actually help expand uh, insights into quantum biology. Thank you. Mm -hmm.